Age, city, gender, in the chat room. How are we doing, people? Cause I know what I'm getting into. Yes. Yeah. And nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop you, but you. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I realize. You realize that? Lead the way. You're in a good place. from Milwaukee, 46 from H-Town, 27 from Fort Lauderdale, 22 from South Kakalaka, 23 from Florida. I said your city, you gave me your state. Follow instructions, people. Come on. I want to shout out your city. Fine no matter what. Bye-bye. Welcome, 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 welcome back. Oh, we're starting the Monday off right. We're going to get it fired up in this mug because, whoo, ain't no party like a Godfather party because a Godfather party don't stop. Man, oh, man. How did? Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. I know I did. I caught up on some much-needed rest yesterday because uh, it it keeps moving, keeps pushing over here on this side. So, here's what we're going to get into. Moderators. Simple. Simply put, um, people in the chat room, understand something. There are going to be plenty of people on the show. Some people you may not like. If, all I ask is you guys to be respectful of one another. That's it. Be respectful of one another and respect the rules of my platform. Meaning... Um, if you don't, if you disagree with somebody, leave them alone. You don't have to talk to one another. You don't have to interact with one another. Um, there are going to be women over here. There are going to be men over here because I have, I said it last week and I'm going to say it again. This high value thing ain't going to stop. So for the one, for, for the men who got their panties in a bunch. And at this point I'm starting to call them the guys out. You got your panties in a bunch. It ain't my fault that you don't like where you are in life. Fix it. it. Ain't my fault. You don't like where you are in life as a as a person. Fix it. But don't complain about the system. And one thing that I found out Friday is something I've always known, but I wanted everybody else to be able to see that the issue with high value is twofold for a lot of men. One, because they can't wish it. What's going on? 51 from San Diego in the house because they can't wish it. They just can't wish upon a star and make themselves high value. A lot of guys are in the mirror telling themselves, I'm the man, I'm the shit, I'm the this, I'm the that. But when they walk out the house, don't nobody know them. Don't nobody know them. And, don't buy, and if they disappear off the planet tomorrow, who would miss them? And that's what bothers a lot of men. Living a life of insignificance. And all I'm saying is recognize it and change it. Don't bitch about it. I'm seeing a lot of complaining and bitching on YouTube from grown, grown, chronologically grown men. So, one, a lot of the guys try to rejigger high value to include them. When... They haven't been that their entire life. 
It's like trying to get to your senior year in high school and all of a sudden decide you want to be the valedictorian. Well, you haven't done the work. The best you could do is graduate with honors. Number two, and arguably the least significant but the biggest problem was with money. I got news for you guys. $10,000 a month is the low number. Guys, there are people who make that in an afternoon. I know people on YouTube that make $100,000 uh, in, in a day. I said Bella Thorne made $2 million just launching an OnlyFans page. So if you got a problem with $10,000 a month, you're not even going to fit into this conversation. There are only a couple of people that I talked to Friday that I actually uh, seem like they kind of got it. And it wasn't these people trying to make this broke argument, that moralistic, principled argument that has never been high value. High value separates itself from the pack. And that's what we're going to talk about. Because, see, what I realize is many men, and even to this degree, women, have an issue with some of these things because they are not satisfied with their current value. Um, that's fine. So that's where we're going to go. Instead of just hammering the static concept of high value, we're going to talk about the dynamic thing about increasing your value. Turn that some bitch sideways and stick it straight up. You can do it. That's somebody made me. I'm a PhD sound. And then the next thing is. Yeah, increasing your value. That's what we're going to get on, increasing your value. See, you want to really see people at their worst take their hope away. And I'm in my platform, I'm not about taking anybody's hope away, but I got to get into this. Appreciate you, fam. Profits over, profit over wages. I got to get into the program. Uh, here's what I need you guys to understand as we go forward. If you don't like the concept of ranking, keeping score, this isn't the platform for you because my, we're on the young men, young women increasing their value. We're on the, uh, I want to talk to the hit squad and I need to define some terms. You're going to hear me mention the term Henry a lot. Henry, Henry. Henry simply stands for high earner, not rich yet. And men and women can both fall into this category. Let's say a Henry. He's 25 to 20, 25 to 28 years old, making about 70 to $85,000. That's good money. Anywhere in this country, outside of New York City, you know, you know what I'm talking about. 20, 25 to 28, making 70, 70 to $85,000. That's a high earner for his age. But he's not going to be rich on that. And the, and the presumption is he's continuing to, he or she, they're continuing to increase their income year over year. They're not just getting 3% raises. We're talking about people who are getting money in chunks. 10% increases like, and here, who are the people that do this? People who are in sales, who can control their income and people who are in professional standpoints. You don't get rich working for somebody else. Let me dispel you right this. And you don't get rich as an employee. You don't get rich as an employee. You make other people rich. The deal is as an employee, you exchange your time, skill set, and expertise in exchange for their systems, their security, and, and their exposure. And if you were smart, you would go in and negotiate the highest money you could get and go in and learn the most you can about the business of what you do and then leave and do it for yourself. 
You don't get rich as an employee. And far too many guys want to get rich as workers. Rich comes from ownership. And the, and the very few professions outside of ownership allow you to make enough money to separate yourself from the pack. Law, medicine, sales. There may be some other ones in there, but that's it for the most part. So when you're a Henry, a high earner, not rich yet. How do you continue to increase your value? That's what we're going to be talking about. That's for the men. And for the women, it's a different, the value equation is different. But for the most part, I'm going to be, I'm going to be focused on, on this increase your value thing. Two separate tracks, 18 to 34 and then 35 plus. And I'm going to lump the men and women into a group together. Men 18 to 34 have different motivations than men 35 plus. Over 35, you pretty much are where you decided to be. And, then, and if you're not willing to make some wholesale major moves post 35, get content and happy with where you are. All right. So, If you, if you type in all caps, you will get blocked. Um, you don't get to type any more than like 10 characters in all caps. Understand something. Software developers. Okay. Um, well, let me, let me say this. Law, medicine, tech, sales. That should cover enough. Law, medicine, tech, sales. Then on the, I call, I, I, break, I, break, I break Henry's into two categories. My white collar, which is law, medicine, tech, sales. And then my blue Henry's. Blue collar men have the quickest way to becoming um, high value. Not white collar. Because you can get into ownership faster in blue collar. Skill trade, electrician, plumber, HVAC technician, roofing, uh, truck driver. But you cannot remain an, a solopreneur. You must build a business. You must build a business and then employ people. What is wrong with you folks calling me? I swear to God, here's the thing. I'm going to start keeping people's numbers who call me during, the day, during my show. And I'm going to one, I'm going to keep you down. I'm going to block you. I don't want to talk to you if you call me during my show. You're too, that's dumb. I'm sorry, but you call me during my show. You're not somebody I want to talk to, work with, anything. Because it's just outright rude. So for the person who just called me, for whatever reason you called, understand, you broke, you broke protocol. And, and that is, and, and, and I'm going to tell you honestly, guys, that's how the world goes. When you're trying to work your way up to high value, it's a lot about your social skills. Because the group acceptance is the quickest way for a guy who's got middle value to get to high. Somebody pulls you up. I would say the majority of guys who are high value have a story where somebody decided to pull them up and give them a shot. And they just looked at him and said, you look like you kind of got what it takes. Here's the thing. Blue Henry's. These are guys who never wear a suit to work. But it's not because they don't look good in a the suit. They're just environments aren't suit driven. But these are my guys who can be in logistics, oil and gas or the skilled trades, to name a few. Ownership happens quicker over here because you get into your, into your subject matter quicker than in white collar. In white collar, you got to do a lot of shit jobs as a, junior exec, as a junior or an account executive and work your way up, dual tracks. But either way, there comes a point in white collar or blue collar where you have to leave the companies you work for. 
when I was work when I worked for Mobile, when I worked for MCI, who is no longer around. You know, I cut my teeth in telecommunications years ago, and that entire industry evaporated. But the skills I learned there are continuing to pay dividends right now. So what is the point of increasing your value? Because increasing your value does two things primarily for guys. You increase your opportunities and you increase your options. So thank you to the Godfather for giving tech a, a shout out. Yeah, because increasing your opportunities right now, there are, there are people right now, the pandemic is making new millionaires. The, because they can't go into the office and because they have a particular skill set that lends to them being able to work in this digital landscape and become more effective at a distance. So to all my introverts, understand something. If you listen to what I tell you and just learn some of the basic things about EQ, you can separate yourself from your, your, uh, your coworkers and your competitors and, and fast track. That's what I did. That's what a lot of guys do. Okay. Let's get the likes up, man. You know, 2,400 people in here. 2,500 people in here. We got to get it moving. What kind of sales job? Another thing, guys, I need to also explain something to you guys. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to have to pay for it. Don't send me an email saying, hey, I would love to pick your brain. I would love to talk to you. You're going to have to pay for my time. One of the key things in this whole high value thing is learning that you're going to have to sacrifice. Anywhere you go, you're going to have to invest in coaching. You're going to have to do crap jobs, work long hours, stop looking for the fast track quick. You're going to have to worry about the long, slow Deferred gratification, all the things you hear, and any, anybody who's been successful will tell you a lot of these things. And trying to work around or do it for cheap or get over on somebody is the quickest way to make your name mud with people who could really help you. Because I will tell you, these guys talk. And if you think you're going to hustle somebody, to like, oh, man, I, I, nah. So here's the thing. High value. So <clears throat> stay on track. Henry's. High earners, not rich yet. That goes for men and women. And the difference between the Henry's and the previous generations, the previous generations were waiting to live life after retirement. These generations are wanting to live life now. The key is balance. The key is balance, in my opinion. You can still plan for the future and live a good life now. Because today, many people aren't getting married as early and they're not having as many kids. So it's different, but you got to realize the, the most important thing in high value is understanding time is the most important thing you have. Time is the most important thing you have. Um, money, resources, power, status, influence, network, gravitas. These are some components of increase. These are some components that you want to increase. Now understand something. I'm an image consultant. I'm an image consultant, and yes, I am a successful guy because I've tried many things and I've failed a lot. But as an image consultant, I deal in reality. Reality, outcomes. I don't deal in theory and what could happen. You notice that a lot on my show. I'm always talking about outcomes, 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 reality. I don't deal in what could be or what should be. I don't deal in principled arguments. I'm, so in my world, things are very black and white, which makes gray, which is what you see me wear a lot of times. Black, white, but most of the time you see me in a gray pinstripe suit. If you watch the Game of Thrones, I'm going to give you some ideas. Tywin Lannister, the House of Lannister, in the real world, would have run that show. J.R.R. Martin made that show to where, or the book, to where he died. In the real world, they would have been the Medici's. They would have been the Roosevelt's, the Rockefeller's. They would have gone on and on and on. So I'm going to go into the alternate universe for the Lannisters. And I'm going to make them black, because I'm black. 
I'm gonna make them black, and we're gonna call them the Lancasters. <laughs> no, we just call them the Lannisters, and they can still be white. It doesn't matter. But here's the point: Tywin Lannister was never trying to be the king. He was concerned about power, power and influence. One thing that made Tywin powerful is he never sought the top job. Too many of you guys trying to be high value, you want to be the number one. You want to be a king, especially you black guys. You want to, you want to be the one out in front. And I'm sorry, the market gets to decide. The market gets to decide who's out in front and there's only one lead singer. Think about the heart, five heartbeats. Everybody's fighting over the microphone. No, no, you want to control, you want to own the studio and the music and the masters. Damn, own the microphone. There's always some new star. Be the, be the hand behind the throne or the ear of power. Tywin Lannister would have gone on and on and on and on in the real world. And that's the OG. That's a truly high value man. You know how he's a high value man? Because even as crazy as Joffrey was, King Joffrey, when Tywin Lannister spoke, Joffrey shut his sadistic self up. Tywin Lannister was so cold that when Joffrey as king, I am the king and da 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 and going off and da he said, I mean, he was roasting Tywin, right? He was, he was capping on him. He was, he was calling him all kind of sissies and fags and, and this and that and punks and wearing purses and all this other kind of stuff. And what Tywin Lannister said, I think the king is tired. That was it. I am not tired. I think the king needs some rest. And then every then his mother, the, the queen, the maester, jumped up. Every powerful person in that kingdom at that table moved on Tywin Lannister saying, I think the king is tired. Maester, maybe some essence of nightshade to help him sleep. Tywin Lannister put the king to freaking bed. King had the mic right. Tywin understood power and Joffrey understood power. And power lays where the people put it. Joffrey was the king, but nobody ever mistook where power was. So Tywin Lannister. And in my version of Game of Thrones, Jamie Lannister would not have gone to the Knight's Guard or the King's Guard. French toast that. He would have been right under his father as he should have been as an apprentice, learning how to do what he should have done. Remember when Jamie was in Tywin Lannister's tent and Tywin was skinning a deer or something like that? And he was saying, I need you to become the man you should have been. Jamie Lannister was born into a position of power and principle and influence, but he threw it all away. But in my telling of Game of Thrones, Jamie Lannister will continue to move on. That's the guy who was born under a father who could teach him something. But I also need to move you into another world, the little fingers of the world. In my version, little finger would have kept on living. In my world, Varys would have, wouldn't have been uh, snipped. In my world, you'd have had Jamie's, you'd have had Varys's, and you'd have had uh, uh, little fingers. And they all would have been high value, I mean, Henry's in training. They were all vying for the next step. And there were three different ways of doing that. There are multiple ways, but there were three different ways. Littlefinger trafficked in information. Varys trafficked in secrets. And Jamie was an accomplished man who actually had the outward trappings of power, but he still needed to learn some things. Now, in the real world, um, <laughs> you know, Let's not get too far off that. So th basically, this is how I think about things. You understand who Tywin is. You understand who Jamie was. You understand who Littlefinger and Varys. Those are the people who ran, um, what was it called? Uh, Westeros. Millions of people. K 
King's Landing, a million people in that city run by a handful of people. Like I said, high value men have always been with. Can non-select men be high value? Uh, Barris was non-select. You don't get much more non-select than no fun bits. But anybody want to dispute his value? Uh, I'm sorry, I miss Tyrion. My bad. Tyrion. You had Jamie, who had the jawline, but he didn't have the discipline. In my world, Jamie would have not gone to Kingsguard, but he would have had to stand back. But Tyrion was born the direct opposite, a dwarf with the mentality. And in my world, those two would have worked together to surpass Tywin. Because they wouldn't have gone and done the Cain and Abel. They'd have worked together. Jamie would have been the front man. Tyrion would have been the back, the, the, the guy behind. They loved each other as brothers, and they wouldn't have fought. They would have worked together to say, this is how we do this. No one will ever accept me as a dwarf and as an ugly little sawed-off dude as king, but I will be your hand. Brother, you will be the king, and we will run this shit. Not only will we run Westeros, we'll go take Easteros. We'll go find, we'll go make dragons. Why is this important? Because you, <clears throat> Littlefinger and Varys show you that you can increase your value. Tyrion and, 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 uh, Tyrion and Jaime show you that even if you were born into it, it's not a guarantee that you're going to maintain it. It comes down to choices. So, increasing your value. Let me go very high level. Um, for, for women, increasing your value. There are some things that are important for women. And one of the most important things for women is understanding that even though you're the queen, you're still the king's wife. Your value is in the ability to keep a high-value man. I'm sorry that you don't like that. But that's how the world looks at it. And again, I deal in reality. You can be an accomplished woman, but if you're 40, unmarried, no children, the world looks at you as something's wrong. You're, you are judged heavily on the, on the caliber of man you can keep. Not get, not deal with, but keep. So, career path, some of the things that high-value men tend to look for in women, they don't want women to compete with them. A lot of, I mean, rarely will you find a high-value man that wants a power couple kind of thing. Sure, they may exist, but in general, if they exist, they're different. Most high-value men want women to play the, the wife role. The, the feminine role or if she has a career path or a calling it's something that she can do from home or from a home office he doesn't want her out there in up under another man's leadership let's just be real with it so ladies are you doing anything right now what you're going to college for you need to go if you were going to college go to college to get a degree in something that you can work a business from home accounting is a good one accounting is a good one marketing is another one Graphic design, I mean, that's, what can you start a home-based business and make $50,000 a year at? home base that you can make $50,000 a year at in your 20s. Figure that out. And while you're doing that, you need to make sure you have a level of sophistication. A sophisticated woman is a fantastic conversationalist. She engages and listens uh, intently to others. She also listens more than she speaks. Listening more than you speak, sophistication, ladies, learn it. it is, this will literally make or break you when involved or around high-value men or IV men or, or hit squad. So... IV movement, increase value movement, increase your value. So I'm going to just say I, hashtag IV, so increase value, but it's really increase your value. The IV movement. So we're talking about increasing your value. Ladies, increase your ability, increase your level of sophistication, increase your level of etiquette. Learn your way around 
the dinner table, around dinner parties, around any place or anything that men of the caliber that you want or, uh, would be at or would live at. Learn these things. Uh, I've talked about being feminine, beautiful, inspirational. We already know that. But God, ladies, you also have to be two other things. You have to be fit. Fit and flexible. Fit and flexible. Flexible in your mentality, flexible in your attitude, flexible in your body. Uh, so, ladies, don't skip the yoga and the Pilates. Yoga, Pilates, cycling, swimming, all these things are your friends. Resistance training, strength. Men love flexible and fit women. Stylish and simple. Stylish and simple, ladies. Less is more. Knock off the outrageous colors, the outrageous makeup. Personally, I don't like, I don't deal with any women that have uh, wild color hair, um, really extravagant fingernails. I'm a French tip manicure dude. Yes. French tip manicure, light makeup, lip gloss, uh, very much a simple stylish. Thank you very much. Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, Tom Ford. Those are some brands. I'm not a, I'm not a Versace and those broad colors. Simple. Now, depending on the kind of man you want, you need to know what kind of woman he wants. But simple and stylish will always work for 80% of people. Well-spoken, no cursing. Ladies, get rid of all the foul language in your vocabulary. There was only one time a woman should say the word uh, fuck, and it should be in the bedroom immediately by followed by me. You should never say the word, I, should, I shouldn't even have to say these things. Cursing, a lady, no thank you. Nope, ever, nope, none, zero, zip, zilch, nada. Not even amongst your girlfriends. Because it'll slip up in public. Foul mouth women lower their value. Because if you think Roger, if you think Bradley, Amir, Keith, or Enrique want to have their woman out and about, and someone hears her cursing like a sailor, and they get back to him and his group is going to make him look bad. Again, you're about him. You'll make a bad look for him. Oh, you mean I don't have a life? Uh, no. Not if you want to be a high-value man's wife. No. Or, or long-term, whatever you call long-term commitment. Tats, tattoos. I'm not a big fan of tattoos, but tattoos need to be able to be covered in a formal. So... Be able to be covered in a formal dress. So a lady should be able to go sleeveless and backless because she's flexible and fit, right? I would say that's for 90% of guys. There are about 10% of guys out there that fit in the category of men, 10% of a very small number of men, but... I have, to, I have to ask you, ladies, is having a half sleeve, even if it's the most artful thing done, is it important enough to miss out on a potential man? Because it's already a very small group. But even as we're talking about increasing your value, you decrease your value by marking up your body. I will tell you right now, I've seen women here in Atlanta that I was like, ooh, damn, she looks the part. And then I'm... Get up on her, and next thing you know, uh, tattoo on your leg, on your back. I mean, I, even here on even here on YouTube, there are women that I think are really attractive, but I'm like, dang, why would you get a tramp stamp across your lower back? I mean, that seemed cute when you had, but, but no, it's not cute at 40 years old. Probably want no tattoo on your 40 year old back. All right. We're going to open it up, man. We need to get these likes up because if we don't, man, we're going to, guess what we're going to have? Guess what we're going to have? Uh-huh. Get my likes up. Y'all thought I was kidding, man. Oh, 
Only a thousand likes? Are you serious? Get them up. Kick it. All right. Shout out to the Lancasters and the Yorks. That's that's right, buddy. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me get down to the last question. Somebody asked, uh, Lifestyle asked, how does one balance life and still attend to wifey? Um, well, wifey attends to you. Okay. Uh, how do you balance life and attend to wifey? Uh, it's a, um, let me tell you, um, that's a misunderstanding that many of us have, especially if we're raised by our mothers. Um, a wife is a, wife is a help me. She's attending to you. You are, see, somebody, I did a video, and I'm going to do it this week. Can we both be the prize? No, you can't. Wives need to attend to their husbands. Women command time. No, they don't. Women are grateful for the time that they have with you. We are in very different positions. Call in. All right, so, and those are some basic things for ladies to increase your value. Any woman across any board should be able to benefit and increase her value by these things. You know, being well-spoken, real, you know, no cursing. You know, I, some guys want women to be more well-read, more, more versed in current events. But generally, you want to be uh, agreeable, and easy to engage. When, when people are around you, people should feel light. Engaging and interacting you should not make a man feel heavy. All right, and it's for men. Some general bullet points for men. For men, first off, a lot of reason people are upset with this high value thing is because men and women are questioning their value and because people are asking them value questions. That's why people are a little upset with this because they're questioning their own value. Men are questioning their value. Women are questioning their own value. And, 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 and honestly, people are starting to question, are you? And the thing is, if you're not happy with your value, you don't want to talk about it. But I would think if you're not happy with your value, Talking about it should be the least of their problems. If you're not happy, do something about it. For men, one of the first things, a, in no particular order, but I will say one of the first things that men can needs to get, they need to do two things at the same time. You need to get a group, a personal and a professional group. Successful men travel with successful men. One of the reasons I was able to ascend the way I did through corporate America is because I ascended with a group. I'm not going to say the people's names, but D, J, C, J, no, D, G, C, P, M, B. Those six people, those six people and I, seven of us, went from company to company to company. And when one of us moved, we all moved. Seven people going at one target together, rising tide lifts all boats. Stop being a lone wolf. When you work in a company, you stop trying to be a lone wolf. And this is the problem. This is why so many of you will never raise your value. You're trying to do it on your own you're trying to be Tesla and you need to be Edison you need to get a group people like you people want to do stuff for you being right principled and moral only makes you a loser if you don't have the other components you can be right principled and moral and a winner see it's not an either or thing that's number two 
Life is and. It's not either or. It's and. You need a group. You need a personal group and a professional group. Maybe those groups are the same, but generally they're different. And then you need a high value mindset. A high value mindset automatically goes looking for the hard path. It does not try to do the hard things, though. You don't go and try to reinvent the wheel. You take what's already working and you improve on it. How foolish would it be for somebody to sit back and say, hey, I see something that's working right now, but I'm going to do something completely opposite. Or would it make more sense to say, I'm going to take what's already working and improve upon that? That's what smart, working smarter, not harder. But see, this way feeds your ego. Oh, but you're going to have to check that ego because you're not going to ascend higher. You're going to cap yourself at your ego because there's a lot of eating shit you're going to have to do as you try to become a high value man. As you try to increase your value, there's a lot of eating shit because you're going to have to sit in Atlanta in a Jamie position in a Taiwan position, in a little finger position, in a various position to uh, Tywin Lannister. You're going to have to sit in a Tyrion position. I'm sorry. You're going to, have to sh- you're going to have to shut up and do what Tywin says, even if you think he's wrong because he he's the man. And other groups seem to get this. And guys who can do this, who can learn to eat shit, Shut up. Tend to learn the EQ skills necessary to move up and deal with other men of value. Get a group. It's a mindset. Then there's also a fitness component. Guys, you got to be an athlete for life. You can't get to be 350 pounds, you know, type 2. Type. Come on, man. You got to be a fitness. You got to get you got to get fit. You don't have to be uh, a muscle-bound weightlifter, but you need to be fit, functional muscle. You need to get ad work, keep your core tight, flexibility, eat, eat a healthy, balanced diet. There's a fitness component. There's also several things you need to master. You need some martial mastery. Dude, you need to learn how to, you need to, learn how to get your hands and your feet calibrated. See, one thing I never really talk about is my martial arts background. But um, trust me. I learned early on that I'm going to have a lot of fights on my hands with guys. Early on, I, le- I realized that there were guys who were going to be upset with me, jealous of me, not liking me because I had long, uh, I had curly hair and women liked me because they wanted, because women liked me. Let's just put it right out there. Guys were going to be mad because women liked me and I was smart. So I wasn't just a, a good looking guy and a dumbass. So I was smart. So I knew I was going to have a lot of jealous haters. So guess what? I, I started uh, Taekwondo early. And I knocked several mother suckers out quick. So it got around that you ain't going to be punking me. I was thin, light in the ass, but I would knock you the fuck out. The word got around OKC real quick. Uh, mess with him if you want to. He will beat your ass and take your girl. And ain't nothing changed. Why do you need martial mastery? First off, as the man, you shouldn't want anything you can't defend and protect. Number two, uh, people are going to try you. And you don't want to end up getting yourself into a situation that you can't defend yourself. That you need a gun. Some sort of weapon all the time? You're a punk. I listen to guys all the time. I cap you all this. You're a pussy. Straight up pussy. Men who really know how to take care of themselves don't have to, don't, aren't looking for trouble, but they know how to handle it. And that's what it comes down to. And there's a confidence that comes with knowing if I have to, I don't want to, but if I have to, I won't hesitate to make you puke blood. I don't, I don't go looking for trouble. I never have. Uh, I, you guys have heard me throw out that I was a bouncer um, before and I fought full contact, but I don't talk about it because I don't need to b- pound my chest about it. But even some of my friends in my, in my, data, in my 
real life have been surprised when they've gone around my martial friends and they realize, oh, oh, you friends, are, he knows this. My best friend from childhood, the first time he saw me fight in a tournament, he was like, oh, he's like, I, I got better to stop talking shit to you. I was like, he was joking, but he was kind of serious because he was like, I never knew. I'm like, what am I do? Run around with a Daniel sign headband around doing jump spin and crescent kicks? That shit ain't real. Martial mastery. Because you need to be able to take care of yourself, number one. And number two, the sheer confidence that comes with knowing. All right. Okay. Say whatever you want, as long as you don't cross this line. And not having just the confidence that comes with that is hard to explain. The confidence with knowing that you don't have to bark loud. You can just say what you need to say and then just move through life. You don't even have to respond to everything. But if someone decides to test you and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you can make them really pay for it. You're more concerned with them than you are with you. When you really master something, you're not you, you're more afraid of what they're going to have to live with than what's going to happen to you. You may get punched or hit, but you're going to break something. That something's going to something's going to really be wrong with them going forward. And see, today people don't take butt whoopings like they used to. So Walking and keeping yourself out of trouble, checking that ego that I said early on, is a big portion of becoming high value. A lot of guys deter themselves off value because they, their ego is out of control. They can't shut up. They always got to be right. They always want to fight, and they think they're the baddest, and they're not. And they stay in lower-level stuff, and they never can ascend past their ego. Because the guys that are up here that would work with them are like, ah, psh, no. Hothead, troublemakers, psh, bad for business. Um, mastering something else. You need, what are you a master of? When I was in sales, my goal was to become a top sales professional, president's club. I wanted to be a top closer. A, B, C. Always be closing. I wanted to go I wanted to be so good that when people, my competitors from other companies realized that we were in on the bid, I wanted them to say, shit. Who's, who's running lead on the account? Kevin Samuels. Shit. That's what I wanted. I wanted my competitors to know that if you're going up against me, I will kick your fucking ass. And you know what? It made them better and it made me better. When your competition is trying to hire you away, you've done something. What have you mastered? You cannot increase your value being average at your profession. You need to, you need to increase something that is valuable and useful to others. Being good at stamp collecting or Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon or, in, or, or 2K... Now, well, let me take 2K and the guards away because you can in esports. But in general, being good at something that's a hobby, it's not what I'm talking about. What is your chosen profession? And are you good? Are you my master at it? This is where you separate yourself from the group when you work for someone. When you work for someone and they say, uh, well, you know, here are the top accounts. We This is an account we need to save. Uh, assign that to Kevin. Here's an account. Here's a territory we need to open and gain market share in. Uh, and it's a difficult. Uh, uh, we, need to, we need to bring Kevin up from Dallas to do that. You know, we need to bring Kevin from Dallas to New York to take over this problem. Not to maintain it when it's working. When it's in the mud and fucking broken, we need this person. Oh, I'm getting excited because this is this is what it is. This is how you raise your value. Oh, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, yes, brother. Troop Doop Scoop. That was my deck. 
Okay. Um, raising your value. And these things always work. And then another thing. And this is where what you think of yourself matters. Affirmations. Affirmations. You have to tell yourself where I am right now ain't where I'm going to be. You got to remind yourself this is temporary. When you're getting up early doing shit jobs, this is temporary. When you're out doing, when you're out working at Walmart or you're doing a shit job waiting tables in your city to make cash money to fund your um, side hustle that's turning into a real business. So you're leaving your job to go wait tables and everybody sees, well, wait a minute, you're waiting tables and you see people that you know and that you would have respect for. And you got to go take the order. You want to? You want me to tell you something? Go, ha, go, who? Huh. Mm. Go have to take the order of a woman or a man that you would like to impress, or a woman you would like to date. You looking good on Suit Saturday, walk by, smelling like Roja Dove, and da da. Then on Tuesday, you she goes into the restaurant and you're her server. Can you walk out with your head up? Will you let that? How would that would that mess with you? If it does, go back to step two. You need the high value mindset. Remember, I'm here for a reason. And it's short term. It doesn't define you. So why is this important? Because the things you have to do along the way don't fuck with you. Oh, man. <laughs> Woo. Woo. <laughs> so I laugh when people talk shit about me because I was like, I, you ain't. Mm. Don't talk. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Mm. The things you have to do along the way are a testament to how strong you really are. See, weak men couldn't do it. The ego would fuck with them. The pride would fuck with them. They couldn't let nobody see them looking bad. Uh, what? Go, go work at this after. You want me to go to my job from 8 to 5, you know, looking this way, and then you want me to go after work to put on a uniform? What? Oh, no, nah, man. I couldn't. I mean, I want the money, and I know it'll be short term, but oh, man, I, I couldn't have nobody see me doing that. <laughs> you ain't ready. You ain't ready. That's why being high value is so damn important. It's so valuable because all the things that come along with it, it ain't the money. It's not the flash. It's not the, it's not the gravitas. It's not this. It's the things that took, it's the things that it took for you to make yourself something. You are not born high value. You make yourself high value. You make yourself the man. Made men. <clears throat> First generation high value is a choice. So Tywin Lannister made himself and he made a path for his son, Jamie. And in our world, Tyrion would have had a path as well. Where are you going to fit in? Ladies, your path is different than a man's path, but the thing is we all have a chance to increase our value. And therein lies the final fig leaf. Forget the fact that you don't like the way I define high value. Forget the fact that you don't like the fact that I say you need to do this or do that. Or that. Okay, are you happy with your value? If you're happy with your value, then you should, you should not have one thing to say about anything I talk about. If you're truly happy with your value and your position, but the reality is most people are not happy with their position. And, they, and instead of increasing their value, they want to change the rules and change the definitions. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right. So we're going to be talking about uh, how to increase your value. But now I want us all to be on the same page that increasing your value is important. Today's monologue was a little bit longer than most. Uh, because I needed to set the table for things going forward. Uh, things going forward, 
uh, are about the IV movement, increasing your value. Increasing your value. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. Money work. Se arregla con dinero. Money work. Si me quiero educar, eh, dormir en algún lugar. Un lugar para trabajar. Eh, y si no hay para emigrar. Todo money, money, todo el dinero. Solo un par de gente se lleva el botín entero. Eh, funny, funny, pasa verdadero. Si tienen la verde, siempre llegará primero. Pero llegaremos antes o después. Solo a los suyos, que Dios te lo ve. Que por más que tarde lo veré caer. Somos malos, buenos y tenemos que ver. No mi alma lo lograré, seré el más grande, no olvidaré de dónde vengo ni cómo voy. Yo digo las cosas como son, no quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación. Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción. Yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves. Sabes, tú me llegas solo a los pies. Para mí ser grande es un interés. Ser un buen humano para mí es un deber. El dinero ya lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré. Seré el más grande, no olvidaré de dónde vengo ni cómo voy. Forgot Miss Tiara. So anyway, we're back. The link's up in the description. The link's up in the description. Ladies, call in. Guys, you can call in too. Here's the thing. Keep it short, keep it concise, ask a question, and, and get out. Ask a question and get out. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes. What's your question? Um, hi. So, um, my name is Mojo. I'm 22 years old. Okay. And um, I recently just moved out of my mother's house um, and got a job, a full-time job. And I'm debating going back to school. But I just wanted to ask you a question. How do you, should I get another job and maybe work so that I can pay the bills or should I just divide my time in between work and school? What would you go to school for? So I'm going to school for an associate's degree and then try to transfer over to get a bachelor's degree. In what? Area of study? Uh, business communications. Nope. Okay. Don't go to school for that bullshit. Okay. That's a bullshit degree. It's just that. Uh, meaning a bullshit degree in that it doesn't buy you anything these days. Um, what do you want to do with yourself? Do you, uh, first, were you raised with your dad? Um, yeah, so I, I, I did have a dad growing up, yeah. Uh, uh, that sounds kind of shaky. Okay, at 22 years old, you're young, you don't know what you want to do, you need to work a lot. The main thing you need to do is work your ass off. I need you working 12 to 16 hour days. I need you coming home to shower, sleep, and shit. That's it. 
Sh- shower, sleep, and shit. I need you dealing with women 5 to 7% of your week, period. And I need you to be doing that for the next 10 years. And then yeah. after that, you can decide what you want to do when you grow up. No offense. Mm. But you got to yeah. try a lot of things. And in your 20s, I mean, how long have you watched me? I've been watching you for about a month now. Well, one of the things you probably should have noticed is I've, I, I, have, I talk about doing a lot of stuff because I tried a lot of stuff in my 20s and I didn't stop. So moving out of your mother's house, the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, go listen to this broadcast again because uh, I talked about some of the things that I did and some of the things that I knew that I know lots of other successful men have done. The group is important. You got to get around a bunch. You got to get around a lot of like-minded men that are going to push you. You don't need content friends. You don't need John Madden football friends. You need people who are going to law school, medical school, who are starting businesses, who are, who are talking about investments. You need people who you're going to go over to their house and be like, shit. Or you see that car, you're going to be like, fuck. You see that, they're, they're, you're going to be like, damn. Those are the kind of people you need to be around. Mm-hmm. And then another part, uh, the money you would spend in business management or whatever, that's where the coaching comes from, man. You gotta, there, there's a lot, but here's the thing: it all starts with money. You gotta get your earnings up. Earnings are the first part to start increasing your overall skills to become more valuable in the marketplace. Got it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I gotta get on to the next caller, so get, make it quick. So yeah, I hear what you're saying. And, and I and I and I agree with that about the business communications and it being sort of you know BS. Um, I I mean right now I'm working in junk removal, so I do see I go into people's homes and there are you know men who have businesses and they're doing fine for themselves. I just don't know how to get there without a bachelor's degree. I don't see it being realistic. But well, hold on. So you think this guy going to get a seventy percent of entrepreneurs in this country don't have degrees? See, what, I'm, what I just showed you, you don't know enough. Mm-hmm. You need to study success. Mm-hmm. Go study successful men. And just because they have a house, you need to ask the questions. This is what I mean by 22. You need, to, you need more experience. But college has never been a way to get rich. If you're going to go to college, you need to go to science, engineering, technology, math, some sort of professional thing. And those are the ways you make money for other people. This way, you're going to college to get an average degree from an average school to do average work to go with a $50,000 a year job. You ain't buying shit with that. No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See, see guys, it's real. It comes down to a real simple choice. You got to go down the road, least travel. And you cannot go down the safe way. You guys want to do this safely. Oh, no, we're going to get it. Um, I don't know who you are. Uh, Gabriel, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, let me, let me do this. I don't want you guys unmuting yourself. So, uh, to the, to the, what do you got for me? Hey, what's up? I'm uh, 31. Um, what's your first name? Gabriel. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, 31. Uh, single, no kids, never married. Okay. Uh, question. Just uh, what I can do to increase my value. Um, I did have some OGs coming up who kind of let me know. It's like, hey, man, as long as you stay in real estate, as long as you don't what do you mean? have kids. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. You're 31 with no kids. Mm-hmm. And you want to know that incre- how to increase your value. Yeah. Increase your value to what? Increase my value to where not so much have the pick of the litter, 
when it comes to <laughs> women and the life I want to live, as far as like the house I want to live in, the life I want to provide to my future children. Um, I'm you, really kind of just running away. Dude, you're 30 years, 31 years old. I need you to say you're 31. I'm still hearing it. No offense. The dude that just called 22, you sound just like him. And you're 10 years older. Yeah. You should know what you want to be doing by 31 years old. And the first thing that came out of your mouth was increase your value. And the first thing that came out was something regarding a woman. So let's just cut to the trace. You want to increase your value so you can get a better quality of poon. That's the first thing that came out of your mouth, man. Yeah, that's number one. All right, then. Well, that's a shitty reason to increase your value. All right. So it's a horrible reason. To, it's, a, it's a poor motivation. Mm-hmm. Before YouTube, did you want to increase your value? Yeah. Um, started a studio for a couple years. What kind of studio? Uh, music studio. Okay. Where do you work out at? Uh, work out at home, just doing like stretches and stuff. How tall are you? Five seven. How much did you weigh your last weigh in? Uh, two thirty five. You ain't working out, bro. First thing a man has to, man. The first I mean, thing. I'm, I'm out. No, no. The first thing a man has to value is his self. That's what I'm showing you. 31, the first thing you came out of your mouth was something about a woman. And I can just show you that you're not even doing... See, the answer would have been, man, I really ain't working out. Just being honest. I'm, o- I'm overweight. And that's the thing. I deal in reality. You're not going to... And if you listen to the broadcast, I lined out. I said, a man needs to... You know, get around personal and professional people that are going to push it. His mindset. Fitness was third on that list. So what I'm really hearing is what I heard often. A lot of you guys, you want something for nothing. You don't want to do the work. You want to be lazy. You want it to come easy. And I'm glad the price is high. I'm glad the price is high. So you can't have it. It should only be for the guys that want to do the work. Or else it wouldn't be worth anything. No, I agree with that. So, at 31 years old, no kids, there's nothing stopping you from getting up, going to the gym five days a week, and working 12 to 16 hours. Yeah, I'm, I'm working that many hours. Uh, no, the 12 to 16 hours. Not, no, hold on, 12 to 16 hours a week that you're getting paid for. Yeah, we. I started another studio. All right. I, I, okay. Well, okay. May, okay I, I got your question. So that's that will be my advice, man. You can't want. Okay, your motivation has to be something other than external. Mm-hmm. So, all the best, my friend. All right. Have a good one. You too now. Yeah, guys, women can't be your ultimate motivator. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know if they heard that. Uh, all right, right, okay. So next, we're going to go to Rashid. Go ahead. Hi, how you doing, sir? Um, what's, what's your question? All right. So I'm 21. Uh, I'm in college right now and Uh I'm a communications major. And um, something that I've been dealing with is like I've been trying. What's your question? Okay. How do I like what do I practice to get like uh, to like motivate myself to like do things like how do you like what do you use to like practice like motivation? You know, where's your father? Huh? Where's your father? Oh, he's not uh, in my uh, my life. He left up before I was born. All right. So you're 21 in communications. Why are you in communications? Um, because uh, from high school, I was told that communications was like a versatile. Uh, it was like a versatile degree. How many communications members? How many communications people with communications degrees? You know, there's uh, high earners. Um, 
Is that I, a degree? Is that a degree path for people who make money? I mean, I, 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 let's I, let's I, knock off the bullshit. I mean, I hear that there are people. Is it a good degree path for for men who make money? Um, no, not that I know. Of. So you're doing an easy degree. Just admit the truth, man. <sighs> yes, I guess so. Yeah, you're going to college for an easy degree. And you can't be motivated to do an easy degree? Well, it's not. Uh, you don't have. Let me stop you right here, dude, because I don't want you to dig too deep. Mm-hmm. You need the truth. The truth is, you're in college for a degree that's easy when you could be in college for something that's worth it. Mm-hmm. And you're asking about motivation? Um, Here's what's going to motivate you when you get out of college and you are broke because that communications degree is not worth the price of toilet paper and you're living on a minimum wage job struggling to find some place that's going to pay you $20 and you're looking at that for the rest of your life. Necessity motivates us. But see, right now, in your 20s, when you could be doing something more, you didn't challenge yourself. You went the easy route. So the first question I asked is, where is dad? Because mom lets boys do this. Mm-hmm. And you and and how far, how many student loans have you taken out so far? Um, I recently took one out. I mean, <laughs> stay at the, the dorms here. So. Oh, at the dorms? Yeah. Okay. So how much debt are you in? By the end of the year, probably like 10 grand. Okay. Well, first question is first. Why do you go to school to get a communications degree? Because it's easy. You didn't go for something that's paying anything. That should be your first your first thing. So um, you can't get past the first step until you accept the last one. Um, what What's your classification? My classification? Mm-hmm. Junior, senior, sophomore? Oh, no, sophomore. Uh, so you went to college late? Uh, yeah, so I've, I had like uh, housing issues, so it's a... Uh, yeah, change your degree up. path. If you're going to stay in college, go get something that's going to pay some money. Don't do this. Mm-hmm. There's nothing There's nothing high value, even above average earning with a communications degree. It's a, it's a joke of a program, and you know that. It was a joke of a program in the 80s, and now we have a digital world. So you think something like uh, I have time to do consults I'm being very direct guys Because the world is very uh, Very direct John How are you? What's your question? Two questions if you have time I'll make them real quick Uh First one, I'm 32, I'm enrolled to school. I know exactly what I want to do with my life, down to the T. Uh, my focus is not strong. My first question is, how do I find my focus and move on from my past? And the second question is, I live in Victoria, BC, in Canada. If you know it's not about that, it's Hold on, um, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You're, you're kind of muffled. Um, you said you're 32 and in school. Yes, I am. And you said you you know what you want to do? With my life. I know exactly what I want to do with my life, yes. And then your question is, how do you remain focused from your work? How do I build my focus? My focus is not strong right now. Well, then, hold on. You said you know exactly what you want to do with your life, but the problem is focus? I had a different lifestyle before coming to school. I just need to understand understand what you're saying. Yes. My first question and my problem is focus. What, What are you going to school for? My major is electrical engineering. My minor is mechanical systems, so mechanical engineering. How are you paying for school? My dad is paying my tuition, and I'm taking off student loans plus internship for everything else. Okay. Uh, were you raised with your father? Yes, That's a yes or no, no question. That's a yes or no question. <laughs> were you raised with your, with your father in the household with you until age 18? Yes. All right. Focus. Uh, at 32 years old, you should be teaching focus. So um, I'm hearing a guy who's who 
Went to school late. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I'll give you this simple path. You're going to have to hire a coach. Mm-hmm. Because the things that you should have accomplished along the way, you should have got out, you should have already been out of college and in your career. You're 10 years behind. Mm-hmm. You don't have time to do self-help. You don't have time to read your books. You don't have time to wing it. You're going to have to pay. So you went into debt for this. You're going to have to go into another about $25,000 worth of debt to get the coaching because you didn't get it from your parents. Mm-hmm. Or the alternative is um, do everything the hard way and be behind. But you're 10 years behind. Mm-hmm. Second question was what? Second question. I live in Victoria in D.C., Canada, and there's not a lot of brothers here. Um, so, as a high value man, I want to find uh, my network here. You're not a high value man. You, as, you, as a high value man, what? You said a high value man has a good and strong network. Right, but we're not the high value man yet. Well, we have to develop ourselves around the network. Well, but we don't need to be worrying about high value man yet. We got to get the man. Okay. You're, you're not the man yet. Okay. I mean, no offense, you're 32, Mm -hmm. you're in college, you're not to man yet. Mm -hmm. So you guys are still wanting to do, you're wanting to skip steps. I just told you, you're 10 years behind. High value should be anywhere in your conversation. It should be, how do I become a functional man? Because whatever happened, I was allowed to waste 10 years, actually 14 years. Hmm. Yeah. Then you need to like tattoo that on your forehead and focus on that. I'm 14 years behind. So I can't worry about YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and fanciful notions. I got to get caught up because the world doesn't owe you or me understanding. They look at a 32 year old man and say, why are you here now? Because when you get out and get a job in entry-level engineering, your colleagues are going to be in their early 20s and you'll be in your early 30s. When will you graduate? Uh, in two years. I'm going to major in a minor. When will you, in my fourth year. So two years. So you'll be graduating roughly 34, 35, and you'll be working with guys 21 to 23. That's a problem. Corporately, it's a problem because managing a 21 to 23 year old versus a 34 to 35 year old. So, I mean, you, you got to keep their front and center, man. You're, you're behind and you got to catch up. And that's why you have to pay for coaching. Tens of thousands of dollars in coaching to help you close that 14 year gap. Got it? Got it. Thank you. All right. Uh, who's deleting messages? Hold on. Who's deleting messages? Is somebody deleting uh, Leah's messages? Don't delete her messages. Uh, moderators, put the link in the chat room. Leave Leah alone as long as she's not bothering anybody. Leah don't bother nobody. Mari, unmute yourself. Hey, how are you? What's your question? Um, so two questions really quick. So, um, I guess in the midst of this pandemic, I was working two jobs. Um, one which towards, I guess, well, excuse me, prior to the pandemic, I had the opportunity to be, um, let me rephrase it, I was spoken to by the executive director at my local YMCA, and I was asked to basically look into going into the position of the athletic director for the whole, for that specific branch. Question, please. Yes. What's the question? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. The question is basically, um, during this pandemic, I had two jobs and dropped off from the one. Um, the second job basically is in a, I guess you call it a gig or a side hustle of mine, something that I'm passionate about. And I'm question. trying to branch out from that. What's the best way to branch off from, I guess, my side hustle into my actual... Where do you live? Uh, Atlanta. Who do you live with? Uh, my mother currently. That's how you get the fuck out and branch out. You don't. You get out of your mama's house. Okay, Because you're going to tell me about pandemics and everything else, and what you're telling me is I got half a job and I live with my mama, and ain't got shit to do with no passion. You don't get a passion. 
Yeah. How old are you? 25. You don't get you you can have a passion at 50. You don't get a passion. You need two, three jobs. Okay. And a shitty apartment, a a, a, a beater of a car, and a girlfriend that goes along with that. You need ramen noodles, craft mac and cheese, bologna. 10-pound bag of fries, get out your mama house. That's why you used all them words. Because at the end of the day, you know I'm 25, living in my mama house, half employed. Right? Yeah. yeah. And what do we call that? More value. No, the world calls, I say the world calls that, and a man at 25, living at home with mama, the world will call him a loser. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm waiting. Well, I guess that doesn't matter, but I'm waiting to. And there's no wait, bro. There's no wait. There's no wait when your mama paying the bills. Mm-hmm. You have a girlfriend? No. no. When was the last time I'm you dated? I don't have one right now. <laughs> bro, I'm trying to tell you. You can't have one not worth a damn. And see, this is where a lot of black men fall apart. You, I don't know where these passion things are. Your passion, your passion. Who told you you get a passion, man? I mean, seriously. In the pandemic, I live here in Atlanta, too. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of jobs. And you work in one? Half of one? So would it be a bad decision right now to try to start, I guess, the entrepreneurial route? Negro, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. (laughs) Okay. Do you have a degree? Yeah. yeah. In what? In sports management. Is that a two-year degree? No, it's four-year. Four-year year degree. It's four but what can you be an entrepreneur and you've done nothing? Mm-hmm. See, entrepreneur is another word for fly by night. You've done nothing. You. What does your resume look like? What's the longest you've ever worked for one company? Um, the longest would be a year and a half, and that was cut due to. And how many hours were you working at this company? Um, in total, through a week, I want to say about maybe, I'll say thirty-six, depending on um, the other job as well, because I was working both of them at the okay, same time. Okay, so you you're not you haven't even had a full-time job. You've never held full-time employment. So how do you go from not having full-time employment to entrepreneur? There is no free money. Mm -hmm. There is no get rich quick. You need to go to McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Popeye's, Burger King, uh, Big Lots, uh, Kroger. You need to go pick up whatever shit job you can to work. Grab your balls and become a man. You got to get your own place, dude. Turn off YouTube. Get in the world. Because you can't come. Okay, dude. No. No. You're still trying to think of ways to not do it. You want to do it. You don't want to get your hands dirty. That's what it is with a lot of you young guys. You don't want to get your hands dirty. (laughs) That's hard. That sounds like work. So should I do it this way? No. You should get your ass up tomorrow and go get a job. Because you're on the channel of an image consultant, right? Yep, yep. I talk about men trying to become the best version of themselves, getting themselves into the top 10% of men. And mm-hmm. dude, you haven't even got into manhood yet. Your mother needs to put you out. Because there's nothing wrong with you. You're a physically healthy 25-year-old man living in your mama house. So to tell me you don't have a girlfriend because you're focusing on your what? Your purpose? That's some YouTube bullshit. You need to get out of your mother's house and go to work. You need to be gone by November. So even graduate school then? Oh, man, I'm tired. Negro, graduate school in what, man? You still want, okay, okay, go into more debt for sports management, which is going to do what? It ain't doing nothing now. 
you still see, this is why I push back. A lot of guys go to grad school. All this grad school stuff is trying to delay becoming a man. Grad school just is another two years for you to hide. What are you so afraid of, man? I guess I'm in my own way, so I sneak up on my way. No, no, what are you afraid of, though? I mean, at 25, you got to know that you you can't even, you can't even, uh, I mean, 25 years old, do you got a key to the house? Yeah. yeah. All right. But you, you ha at 25, you should be out taking life, taking charge. And you look hella comfortable in that house. Working part time. There's no way you should be able to come to your mother's house with a part time job and sit down comfortably. You should be ashamed to come to that house that way. Your pride should bother you. How much are you paying in rent? Not. not. Huh? Not. not. S say what? I'm not. not. You have a car? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who bought that? Um, I pay half. My mother paid the other half of it. Do your mother have a boyfriend? Um, not to my knowledge. Well, technically, but not. not so really. you're a son boy. So you're a son husband. I remember you spoke about this in a few episodes. Back. I'm going to do all you son husbands a favor. Don't call my show. It's not going to go well for you. 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 I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear your story. I don't want to hear nothing from a 25-year-old living in his mama's house trying to find himself. I don't want to hear shit from you. That's just real. I don't. I have nothing to say to you. I'm not your daddy, and you ain't my responsibility. Unmute yourself. Hello? Hello. Um, if it's okay with you, I do have two questions, maybe three. Is it okay if I can ask No, you can go ahead and ask the first one. First one? Okay. Um, I'm 19 years old. And I'd like to know, other than women, what, what other... other obstacles or this things I should avoid in my 20s when, before I reach my 30s to um, reach that next level. What's it, when you're 19, you're trying to find out what obstacles you should avoid? Yeah, other than women. Like, what are some common obstacles that 20-year-olds Laziness. When they're trying to reach that... Laziness. Complacency. Are you in college? Okay. okay. Are yes, you in sir. school? Yes or no? Oh, yes. yes. You're in college? Oh. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, going to uh, ACC, which is a Houston college for um, web development because I All want right. to. So, where's your dad? That field. So, where's your dad? Uh, in my life uh, and in his house. Oh, okay. Which is um, where I'm at. <laughs> but, okay. Are you going to school full time or part time? Part time. So, where are you working? Uh, I actually work in my city's uh, court system. I am a civil screener. Oh. I scan people through metal. Okay. How many hours a week are you working? Dangerous. How many hours a week are you working? Um, a total 25 hours a week. Okay, that's unacceptable. You're part-time student, you need to be a full-time worker. So you've already, you've already failed the first one, lazy. All right. I can't fix I can't fix lazy guys. I cannot fix lazy. All right, man. If y'all are calling in with these lazy questions, I'm, hello, unmute yourself, please. Yeah. First name. Hello. First name. What's your question? You, 
What do what now? I don't. I don't. I said, what would you do if you were in that situation? And All right. Situation. This is about increasing your value. Are you having anything on the topic? I don't know. Okay, just make it short, please. Okay, I have, I have, I put twenty thousand on the side to invest, but I don't know what to invest in. And while I was waiting to figure out what to invest, what do you, in, what, are you working full time? I uh, no, I'm not working full time. When's the last time you had a full time job? Uh, before uh, the pandemic. Do you have a college degree? No degree. Who do you live with? Uh, I stay by myself. How are you paying rent if you don't have a job? Uh, I'm still collecting money from my last job from the pandemic. All right, so. And I, I hold, was on, in the oil hold on, field hold on, and I was, hold on, hold on. So I'm talking to a man who ain't had a job in what, six months? Uh, yeah, roughly. And you asking me what to do with 20,000 funky dollars? Yep. You can't increase zero to nothing. You can't increase zero. I have 18 people in my call room right now. If you have a full-time job as a man, if you're a man that has a full-time job, type yes in the chat room. If you're on Zoom right now, you got a full-time job, type yes. All right. Of the guys who type yes, if you live in your own place, type yes. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead and AC. What's going on, man? Brother, give me some help. I can't hear you, though. You're muted. I can't hear you. You're muted. Andre, you unmute yourself, Andre. Go ahead. Still can't hear you for some reason. Oh, Andre, I can't hear you. There we go. Testing, testing. AC, can you hear me? I can't hear you, though. There we go. That should do it. Oh, well. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed, man. Um, I, I'm not going, I can't hear you, AC. Um, let me see if I can hear this. Yeah, we got the sound. Uh, I'm going to put you back in the chat room and, the, and, the, and I'm going to drop you back in. Um... I'm going to admit AC again. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Ladies, you're up next. Ladies, the next 30 minutes is for you. AC, go ahead and unmute yourself. There we go. There we go. You hear me? I can now. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so the common theme in which I'm seeing is, is people trying to skip the boring part of life and success. Yes. Overall, success is extremely boring and monotonous. It just looks cool once we get to your level. We're on YouTube, we got 5,000 viewers tonight, that looks fun, but all the boring stuff to get there, it, it takes years of monotonous work. And also, you don't have to become successful 
at the thing thing you're most passionate about. That's an overused word, especially for men. Mm -hmm. We should be looking for advancement and fulfillment. And and, and what we'll do is we'll get passionate on the back end. So I did one thing last year that made me Mm $130,000 that I was not overly passionate about. I was, but I'm great at it. It's Mm -hmm. a gift. Right. I take that money and invest it in things I'm passionate in. I have fun at the beach in Jamaica with a lovely woman. I I invest in the stock market market and real estate. So that whole passion and all, no, no, no. If you do not know what you want to do, do something that can make you money long term that you're good at. Take Mm -hmm. that money, invest it in other things that will make you happy and fulfilled. But do something you're good at. Thank you, brother. Focus on your gift. Thank you for... uh giving us something because uh yeah ooh, child. <laughs> worry about that stuff later mastery right, is sexy mastery will bring you money thank you bro ac hatchet everybody look guys i'm trying to uh what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to all right i've had more people ask me why don't you talk to guys why don't you talk to guys well because my gut told me from what i've seen a lot of guys aren't really ready a lot of guys are still why don't you talk to young guys or young men? Because a lot of you aren't ready yet. A lot of you, your eyes have just been opened uh, in your 20s. And you're asking questions that you should be asking after the 10 years of eating shit. So you're trying to get there too soon. So um, if you're in the dark, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, put you on. I don't have time for uh, want to be troll like dudes. So, here we go. I'm going to go to, uh, let me see, Fred T. Unmute yourself. Hello? Yeah, what's your question? Okay, um, first of all, I'm 21. Um, I'm not in college, but uh, I work three jobs. Um, my, my kind of question is, and I'm on track for an uh, IT career. Question. I'm, uh, my question is, so should I wait until, you know, because I'm on the road to be to making good money, should I should I wait until, you know, I get my job to focus on relationship or should I, you know, still try on, on, on the road there? Did you hear what the brother just said previously? No, I wasn't listening. So you didn't hear what the other guy just said? No, sir. can't be bothered to listen. I can't be bothered to answer. Fuck you mean? Um, Chris, unmute yourself. Hello? Hey, what's your question? Um, I'm moving into sales from um, a construction job and right now... I was good at my construction job. What's your question? How does somebody who is um, anti-seductive get into sales? How old are you? 27. Anti-seductive or anti-social? Anti-seductive. What does sales have to do with seduction? Everything. No, it doesn't. Um, I think you have a misunderstanding of sales. Why do you want to be in sales? I won't hit the number targets. I want working hourly. You want money. I'm in the right industry. You want money? Yes. There's no free money. Granted. Okay. I don't think you have an understanding what sales is. It's not anything about seduction. It's about becoming an effective communicator and getting that person to purchase a product or service that will do them some value. And people don't get into sales and get free money just for being in sales. You have to get professional training. You have to become an effective communicator and effective closer. There's a long process to becoming a salesperson. There's no free money. And it sounds like you just want it for the money, which is fine, but they don't give that away. You have to earn that. My main problem is um, 
Okay, I answered your question. I got to go on to the next. Go ahead. Your main problem is what? Let me finish this and I move on. I have a problem getting people to like me. Okay. This is where coaching comes in. You need, this is where therapy, clinical therapy to understand what's going on with you to make sure there's nothing clinical, and then coaching. Um, but at 27 years old, let's just assume that you're a good person and you have a problem with getting people to like you. I've said this countless times. The world does not owe me or you understanding. You have to fix it. And you can't do it on your own. You can't read it in a book. That means you're going to have to invest in it. That means you're going to have to get in your wallet and spend thousands of dollars and invest hundreds of hours to get the opportunity to go do something for 10 years and eat shit. Thank you. Got it. All right. There's no free money, gentlemen. This is why this is why the high value thing is so many guys upset because they want something that, you know, they want it easier. I get it, but it doesn't work. Go ahead, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas, unmute yourself. Hello. Yes. Um, basically, um, a brief overview of background on me. Just a question. Just your question. Just your question. Just my 29 year old second year of pharmacy student. I want to know if going into pharmacy alone is enough to make myself a high value person. Nope. It'll make you a higher earner, but it's not enough to make yourself high value. All right. So, from, from pharmacy, how can I become more of a high value person? Why do you want it? I guess, you know, again, uh, to be get that status sitting, sit symbol for women. All right. So, obviously, just being a higher earner does not get you to other things. If you watch what I say, that requires more teaching, more coaching, more, more input. High earner does not, does not automatically make you high value. And that's the problem. A lot of my technically or scientifically minded friends, ha people have because they think I got the money, but that does not make you that does not give you the, the, the status or the ranking or the rating you want to. I've already listed out the six basic principles of high value. There are some other ones after that, but that's what's required. So if you want to, and the ultimate outcome of being high value is what? You want to have what is an outcome? Uh, I guess not just the money, but the status. And, you know, For network. what? For what? Go ahead and say, I need to know for what. The why is important. You just want to have the status just to have it? You want to have the status because it makes you more attractive to women? And for people in general, you know, you brought up status. You brought up. But I know why I want things. I, but you got to know why you want them. See, the why is important. Because All the right. why is going to, because if you don't want it, the why does, if, if your why isn't big enough, it won't matter. All right, I guess I'll say my wife, my wife mostly related to status, just respected, I'll say, respected uh, oh. peers. Well, again, I've answered the, okay. I don't know. There's, money isn't enough. Money is a starting point. But the other parts require effort and work. I mean, if that's the case, every pharmacist should be respected. I just went to the pharmacy today, and honestly, I'll be honest with you, I don't care who's back there. When I go to get my medication, I could give a shit who feels it. There's a, there's a pharmacist here at the, at the Walgreens, and across the street at the CVS, there's another one. There's an entire team of pharmacists there, right? Mm -hmm. Drive down the street to Kroger, there's another one. Drive down to uh, uh, Walmart Pharmacy, there's another one, right? Mm -hmm. There could be 10 pharmacists on the same goddamn street, right? I want to say 10, the well, same thing street. Okay, I said, I, yeah, I here in Atlanta, because there could be, how many pharmacists are in one CVS? One. They only have one pharmacist on staff for the entire 12 hours a day they're open. Well, probably two or three, actually, in that, in that case. Exactly. And if there's two or three there, there's two or three across the street at the, at the Walgreens, two or three at the Kroger, you get to 10 real quick. My point is, being a pharmacist ain't nothing special. 
Yeah, I was thinking about like specializing, like oh, getting my residency and specializing. Being a pharmacist ain't nothing special. Just like saying I'm a I'm a doctor. You could be a family doctor. A PD, that ain't nothing special. There's a hierarchy in medicine too. You think a family doctor and a brain surgeon or a cardiac surgeon are on the same level? And how do most doctors look at pharmacists? They look at pharmacists as doctor wannabes. Come on, man. I can see what you're saying. Yeah, because doctors, physicians look at dentists and pharmacists as guys who couldn't go to medical school. There's nothing special about being a pharmacist. I didn't make the world. So you may make money, but what are you in the world? You guys want it too easy. You just want it for the money. But then you you're the same, but then the same guys will turn around and get upset if a woman wants you just for your money. Paradoxical. All right. Um let me get to Dom uh, Dom Trees, is that you? Mr. Bingham? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, six. What's going on? What's going on? I'm a, I'm a noob, by the way, so don't. You know. I know. I, I saw your video. What's up, Frank? What's man? What's the question? Um, so I'm I'm living in Seattle. Um, I've been in the private. On your next. Go ahead. Um, private nonprofit sector human services. I've been working in um, middle management, and I want to know what would be a good move to for me to get my MBA to be more um, competitive. How old are you? I'm um, 37. Getting an MBA at 37 is rarely a good move. Okay. Um, it's rarely a good move at that age because um, what's, your, what's your undergrad degree in? Um, I have an undergrad degree in psychology, and I graduated from seminary. I have an MDiv. Okay. So the underlying degree, MBA doesn't hold the weight it used to. Okay. Um, what do you want the MBA for? I want to um, go higher in management, so possibly okay. going into like um, maybe CEO or CFO. Okay, so what company are you working for? Uh, well, is the company going to pay for you to attend the program? Um, they pay some of it, and I'm going to pay like the rest out of pocket. Okay, but are you, are you, and after you get it, are you responsible to work for them for a certain amount of years? No. Well, if they're going to pay for it fully... I could say get it, but I just don't see the value in having an MBA at almost 40 years old to try to become a C-level executive. Is that what we're saying? Right. Uh, for what size organization? Um, Are you trying to do it for the fortunes? Not necessarily, no. Are you trying to do it for regional players? I mean, give me the size of the organization. Yeah, regional. Um, regional. All right, well, all right. Due respect, the, the, guy, the guys who are in line to become an executive for regional concerns are already on path and in track right now. Okay. They're already in play. Okay. It's not about education. And I think right. you know that. Right, right. So why go get more education if it's, you know it's not about that? That's true. This is where executive, when I do coaching with guys, with guys at your level, I do what's more called peer counseling. Because it's not so much about coaching guys at your level, it's more about counseling guys at your level to just start to flesh out some of my own ideas. See, you probably, you probably already have the skills that it would take to go to do the, do the job. You just don't have the connections. Right, okay. And that's what you need. Okay. The connections are the consideration, and you don't get that for free. It would be better to invest in that than an MBA. I think you always okay. talk yourself through the first part of that process. All right, man. Stay right, cold. Peace right. out. Shout out to all the brothers Alpha Phi Alpha. He was, eight, he was an alpha in the house. All right, Big Vaughn, what's going on, brother? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Mr. Samuels, what's going on? You hear me fine? I'm good. What's up, Neff? 
Listen, man. So I'm I work uh, as a college professor. My question is, and I'm an entrepreneur in internet marketing. How to build your network, especially during pandemic. I used to hang. You out said at you work at what kind of professional? As a blank professional. I, I do. I um, I'm a college professor. Number okay. one, and I also have internet. I own an internet company that makes right. pretty good six figures. As an entrepreneur, it's a lone wolf type of thing at moments. I, I wonder how to build net. My what city network. are you in? I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston started at the schools. Boston has one of the most vibrant networks in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, Harvard, Boston, you know what I mean? You got the college triangle right there, right? Yeah, and I, I know people in them. It's more like I'm trying to build, I, I'm trying to build pair relationships that I, I, I serve people in But business. you got to start, with, okay, again, mm-hmm. you don't start with the end. You start where you start. Start at the right. schools. And then the chambers. Are you are you plugged into anything that's uniquely Boston? Not at all. All right. So you want to get plugged in, but you got aren't even starting with what makes Boston Boston. Boston has an Irish population, has a strong academic connection, has political ties, and has a thriving business community. And there has some things that are uniquely Boston. All of those places will be great places to start. The people you want to talk to are in these places. You're just not going to meet them up front. They have the event list. They have the events. They have the they have the events. They have the 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 social calendars. They have the contact list. It all starts from existing groups. Uh, And also, are you a Catholic? Absolutely not. Uh, Are you a Christian? I'm a music minister at a church. So yeah. Okay, you say absolutely not. Uh, Boston has a huge Catholic population, right? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that until you just said it. That's why I said uniquely Boston. You need to understand what your city is. I don't. I, I okay, really don't. well, okay. I'm well, from then, New York, that's your home? Huh? <laughs> I'm from New York. That's How long you live in Boston? i would probably say seven to seven years ish. So, bro, that don't count no more. You in Boston? Yeah, I, I feel you. Now nah, you're absolutely right. I, I know. You. So you got to get plugged in. You you in Boston? They got baked beans. They got New England Patriots. <laughs> they got Celtics. Yeah. Man, come on. You got to get in touch with Boston because of, uh, even if you start networking, you can't speak Boston language. You can't say "pot the cob Yeah, nah, nah, no, I could I could do that part. Nah, yeah, but they're gonna find out. Yeah. They're gonna find out that even if you, nah, can, the- if you can speak to speak, you don't know what they know because you haven't I'm become here. a Boston guy. Yeah, all right, yeah. got it. I feel you, man. Thank you. Appreciate all you. All right. See, yeah, we all want to. St- we we. It's all about people, folks. It's always about people. Let me get on down here. Let me see. Um. Let me see. To Charles. Uh-uh, let me get get on through here. Next person up is Charles. Unmute yourself, Charles. Hello. You muted yourself again. Unmute yourself. What do you have for me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. What's your question? Quick question. Hey, I've been in the Air Force about 10 years. It's that time to transition. Um, going to transition, I'm getting my MBA, going back into the government service, but I want to go to the $250,000 mark. I won't be able to make that type of salary doing government work. So what do you recommend? I'm in uh, my career field in acquisition, so. What city are you in? Hawaii. Huh? Hawaii. Hawaii. And you want to make two hundred? So your end goal is to make two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Yes, sir. Why? Take care of the family. I got two kids. Okay. But where did two hundred fifty thousand dollars come from? I uh, looking at my father, seeing what he took. He he made around one sixty. So I want to go one step above that to actually. But how how old are your kids? Uh, five and nine. Due respect, man. You had the kids before you had the money. That's true. <laughs> That's why so, I went. I mean, you, you can't. There's no free money, fam. I hear that. So basically, you asked me, "Hey, man, I don't have the skills or the connections or the network t- to be worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars to the market. I How do I skills. get that money?" That's what. That's effectively what you asked me. Well, I got the skills. Okay, but you don't have the network or the connections. Yes. Well, being in the military. There you go. It's a trade-off. 
You went to the military, which gave you comfort, safety, and security, but it took you out of the competitive job market. So it cost you connections and network. So even if you've been in there for 10 years, you've effectively not spent 10 years in the business sector of any city. So now you want to come in and redeem your 10-year military chip and say, I have the experience, but it requires more than that. It's like I told the last guy, you can have the skills, but if you don't have the network or the connections, these jobs aren't about skills. If everybody with the skills could make that money, it wouldn't be worth the money. So effectively, what I'm saying is, uh, one, how much are you making? How much are you, how much would you be making after you leave the military? About 90000 So you want to make another $160,000. I could take the riskier route and go entrepreneur and go do what I do as a contractor and work as a middleman. But, but, you, but the thing is, you make, you'll be making $90,000 after you leave the military? Yes, sir. All right. And then you will have the time to work 40 hours or plus? Yeah, I have to. Okay. What I'm trying to ask, are you getting, will you be getting roughly a pension, a retirement or something? You'll be getting money every month. Yes, sir. All right. And that's about $90,000 a year. No, I, I, so transitioning, I go to the civilian world. Okay. I I got a job guaranteed, basically. And it'll be paying you $90,000. Yes, sir. Full time. Yes, sir. So you you're working a job that you've been that you've had to do something for ten years to transition to the civilian world after ten years experience to go work a full time job that's paying ninety thousand. Yes, sir. And I but you want to then find a part time job that's going to pay you nearly twice as much. I don't want to find a part time job. I want to make a decision before. I actually transitioned to the government, sir. I could it took you government. ten years to make ninety thousand. What decision could you make that's going to make give you three times the money? See, it's real. The logic is real simple. It took you ten years to get up to a worth of ninety thousand dollars. There is no transition to make two times is one eighty, two fifty. Let's just say two seventy. That's three times the money. There is no transition for that. Does that make sense? I, I get. I hear what you're saying. Like, there's no transition as far as going to another job at that higher level. Well, there's no transition as far as skills. I understand. I, you're not, you, my friend. The reality is, you're not worth that much on the open market, because if you were then why, why why we need to go to college? If I could just go to the military and have the safety of the government, Uncle Sam trained me in the, milita- trained me in the military, uh, get military benefits, housing, and all that stuff, and then if I did my 10, and then I could come out and then transition to something paying me three times as much, why would I need to go to college? Or anything else, everybody be running to do that. That would be that. See, you, and when I say it like that, it's like, well, damn, that sounds crazy. Well, yeah, you want free money? No, so you're you a ninety thousand dollar dude. That's it, what you're worth. What, what do you recommend to change to upgrade that value? Because uh, well, I'm, bro. I mean, I, truthfully, um, the only way you get more money is being more valuable. And you've done nothing to make yourself any more valuable. And that's not... You've taken the safe route. The military was a safe... Honestly, when I came out of high school, military was a safe route. This is the safe route. Going to college after high school would have been going into debt, going to get a degree, then having to get out here and compete. That's That's the more risky route, right? Yes, sir. But it has the greater return. You went the safe route. I don't want to go into debt. I want Uncle Sam to pay me. I want the comfort and the benefits of all these things. So you got safe money. You put your money in a savings account. I put my money in the market. You get 0.2% interest. I get 12% return. It's about risk. 
and you didn't want to risk anything. So now you want to say, well, now I'm safe. I want to take a risk. The market's still what it is. Effectively, you'd be going out into the market and they'd say, your 10 years in the military is worth what? You can't come in at a 10 year, uh, 10 year experience level. Well, across the board, you can't come out at a 10 year experience level. If you could, you'd already be doing it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I've been in the well, military. well, you don't know. No, the, the answer is no, you can't. Because okay. if you could, it would be a well, if you could, it would be a well known tactic. If you could say, hey, man, when you get to TNN, all you got to do is go to ABC Company and they'll pay you. Unfortunately, man, what you, you are where you are. You want to make more money. Um, you're going to either have to risk and invest in something. But, I mean, talk about entrepreneurialism and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know what kind of skills you have, but the, net, the bottom line is you took a safer path. And it's safe money. When you said 250, I'm like, bro, you do realize that's top 3% earners in this country, right? And you don't get that just going to the military. So you're saying that is no actual. All right, man. I, okay. I, I've already answered that. I got other people. Do you want me to give you a. a, a, a I don't know what else you want me to tell you. Sure, I guess anybody could do it. You can win the lottery, but it's not a guaranteed path. There's no guarantee. So I don't know what else you want me to tell you, man. I mean, do you know many? Okay, who do you know who's left the military who's making two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars a year? I don't know nobody making two hundred. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying how do I take that path to get? Who do to you that know point? who's left the military who's taken the path to make them that kind of money? Well, I don't know that many people that left the military. A lot of people want to stay there. Well, is that no? Is that normally what? Who do you know? Who do? You, who have you heard this happening to? Nobody. My, there we yeah. go. There you go. Y'all want free fucking money, man. Man, I'm tired. Y'all want free damn. Mm. Free money, free money, free money, free money. All right. All right, Tora. Hello? Can you hear me? I can barely, go ahead. All right, my original question you answered on our previous caller, so um, my next question would be, what would your suggestions be or additional suggestions be for increasing my value? What do you do currently? Right now, I'm a social worker and I'm starting a tax business. How old are you? 36. Increasing your value in what area? Um, I would say, well, Obviously, financially, I want to make six figures. My father made six figures when okay. you know I was living but with you're him. A social worker. Yes. So you ain't never going to be a social worker to be six figures. Oh, of course I know. All right. I would have to be a supervisor first. Okay. That's also why I'm starting the tax business because it's something that I can do. And okay. So why do you why do you want to? It's make six something that I can now? do, and I've been. It's not that I want to make it now. I just had a few setbacks and I'm in a position right now where I can actually do some things. I have more free time. I've been working more than 60 uh, hours so a let week. So let me, let me go ahead and knock it down. Okay. Okay. 36. What city do you live in? Los Angeles. How much are you making? Right now, 75. I would leave Los Angeles. That would be a bit difficult. I have a daughter here. Okay. Well, you live in one of the most expensive cities in the country, and you're mm -hmm. making $75,000, which is broke. At 36 years old, a tax business is not going to push you up to a high standard of living. I have clients in Los Angeles. I'll be in Los Angeles in two weeks. Okay. $75,000 a year in Los Angeles is roughly $36,000 a year in Atlanta. 
Would you? Oh, oh, am I off on that number? I wouldn't say that you're off. I just my situation's a bit different. I'm just asking about the numbers. No, you're you're right. All right. So, due respect, even getting to a hundred in L.A. Yeah, <laughs> it's still pretty <laughs> abysmal. So, you say you have a daughter. Yes. Are you and her mother married? No, we're not. How old is your daughter? She's eight. Well, fam, I have news for you. It's going to be harsh. You don't have custody, right? I've already accepted that. No, I don't. All right, then you need to leave because you don't make enough money to stay there. You're already a weekend dad. Look, I had to go back and forth for nine years from Oklahoma for a long time. But I had to go someplace where the money where the money was. A social worker in L.A. doing taxes on the side is still broke. Understandable. All right, man. Thank you very much. See, you guys want it easy. You don't want to do what you got to do. It's like, well, I don't, I don't want to have to move. I don't want to have to. Ah, well, I, I wanted to go to the. Okay. Increasing your value is a hard proposition. It takes work. Godwin, hello? Hey, Kevin. Uh, uh, Godwin here calling from Canada, Toronto. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? My question is this. Um, I work in a, a luxury department store. I sell suits. And okay. I want to get a tip on becoming a better closer. Becoming a better closer? Yes. Hmm. Um, does the company you work for, do they provide any kind of sales training? Barely. All right. Well, the way you become a better closer is investing in sales training. When I was a rookie salesperson, I made $35,000 my first year. I took $5,000 out of the $35,000 gross, and I had to invest it in nine weeks of training. But the okay. next year, I made $15,000 more. So that's the only way. There are no tips. You got you need training because you have to have training in pitching, overcoming objections, closing, pre-closing, trial closing, follow through, follow up, prospecting. It ain't free, man. Sales training is what's needed. Right. So oftentimes people say, "See what I do here?" It's a lot of sales in this. Because it's effect, asking effective questions to lead to an effective outcome. All right, Kevin. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. See, going to college is is what everybody else does. Are you not willing? If you're not willing to put go into the additional fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of debt on top of college, then just stay there and do regular, regular schmegler. Uh, Draymond, go ahead. How you doing, Kevin? I'm good. What's your question, man? Now, my question is, I'm trying to get into sales. What do you recommend for a fresh-faced 25-year-old, man? That's that's all I need. Uh, what city are you in? I'm actually in Mississippi, man. I need to get out. I'm, I'm planning on... What, what part of Mississippi? Jackson. Yeah, you need to leave there. First of all, uh, honestly, 25 years old, <clears throat> probably the only kind of sales that are going to be around there for 25 year olds. Entry level is car sales. Okay. <clears throat> and okay, uh, so you're going to need to take. I... Okay, you need you to listen. Um, you could do that, but it's a burnout job. Okay. Uh, you're going to have to cut that hair. You're going to remove those earrings. Okay. And as much as the down home, down the south, the southern colloquialisms. You're going to have to uh, get uh, your straight-laced corporate speak on. But the ultimate goal is to make enough money to move to a larger city with uh, better job prospects, to get into a corporate sales environment mm -hmm. within, in, before age 30. Okay. That's what I would suggest. Okay. Uh, I'm from Oklahoma. So it ain't much. The prospects are much better there, mm -hmm. but it needs to be outside sales. Okay. Can't be call center. It has to be something to where 
you know, you don't want to go into Verizon or any of these places that will say it sells. Well, actually, that may not be a bad bit, too. If you can't get into car sales, excuse me, AT&T, Verizon, these kind of places may not be a bad fit because you'll make enough money and you'll be working indoors and you can actually take a lateral move and transfer to someplace like Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, a bigger city with a larger market. Transfer laterally with the company, have a job waiting on you, go get you an efficiency apartment and go live in one of the bigger cities and then start working that city. Work that job and really the best thing to do is start working with a headhunter, recruiter, something like that to try to break into entry level sales somewhere. Got it? I got it, man. I appreciate you. All right, then. Stay smooth. All right. (laughs) See, I I mean, sales has a lot of options, but you got to be willing to do the work. You got to be willing to make the moves. Um, Who is this? Torin? I'm sorry. Gabriel's next. Gabriel, how are you? Unmute yourself. Ask to unmute. Okay, I'm going to ask you to unmute again. I don't know why it's not unmuting. All right. Hidden Leaf, unmute yourself. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on? Hey, what's... Uh, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Your question is what? (laughs) My question is, I just uh, recently got an opportunity to really like step up, you know, really like um, take myself to the next level. Um, and, uh, you know, I just want to know, when do you know is the right time really to, to take those risks in business? Um, but I don't know. Okay, background. give me, no, hold on, hold on. Uh-huh. What you just told me is I've really got a chance to step up and take it to the next level. I don't know what that means. How old are you? I'm um, 34. Step up in what way? I own a cannabis dispensary, and um, I'm, I got an opportunity to get a new commercial space. And uh, it's a little bit more expensive than the. Okay, a new a new location. Yeah, it's a nice location, better location. It's a little I mean, bit when more. Are you, expensive. When do I know? When is it the right time? Well, just in any business aspect, not just. Well, I own a but it's all okay. Okay, thirty-four. You need to start taking some risks. Okay. You're gonna fail, man. You take the best shot you have and you work it. <clears throat> if it's a good space, a good opportunity, can you can you can you make the money to pay the rent? I don't know where he went. All right. Well, he went away. So, yeah, guys, um there's a repeating theme here. Um How do I get an outcome without risk? Sincere. Uh, Uh, Go ahead. Hello. Hey, what's your question? Okay, you just muted yourself. Hold on. Uh, Unmute yourself again. What's your question? What's your question? Okay, you you keep turning off your camera. Um, what part of the medical field are you in? I'm a phlebotomist and a nurse technician. Okay. So why you say become a high value male working in the medical field? Repeat the question again. You say how to become a high value man working in the medical field? Yes. But you're a phlebotomist and a what? And a nurse technician. All right. Um, what's that in the background? I'm sorry. That's one of my patients talking. I'm at work right now. All right. So in general, those aren't high paying positions, right? No, they're not. All right. Well, there's your first answer. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm asking you for any su- suggestions, any ideas, any. How old are you? I'm 27. Okay, but you've chosen your your path. But it's not the ending result, though. Okay, 
I know how much I make. You know how much a phlebotomist and these people make. You're asking me what? How to make more money? Yes, sir. Any any suggestions? Like, I know... Yeah, you need a different career. You need a different career path. Okay. You chose to be a phlebotomist and you're in the medical profession, but you're not a doctor. That's what the money is. You, the, the positions make what they make. And unfortunately, unless, unless you plan on changing professions, you're, you're kind of stuck. You can't change the definition of, of high value. You need to increase your value by increasing your worth. And you increase your worth by increasing your marketable skills so you can earn more money. Can I tell you what my original plan was? What, what being uh, for it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's what matters is what you're doing now. You're 27 and you have... This is what you're Can I tell you what my original plan was? You got too much noise going on in the background. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Torin. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Have the high value salary, um, okay. and I wanted to speak to some of the younger guys that called earlier. Um, I'm 49. Uh, I have a six figure job. I had it since 2013. I've been earning over hundred thousand um, dollars. I think it's very, very important um, that even if you're in college and you find someone, uh, it would still be smartest to do your uh, career solo get yourself situated and established like you've always advised on your other videos. Mm -hmm. Even um, if you think you want to be um, married early, I married um, while I was in graduate school. Um, Things have uh, thankfully worked out for me. Um, I I married what I did not know at the time, but what is um, what you call an FBI. Mm -hmm. And um, things have worked out really well for us. However, um, it was just a luck thing, to be quite honest. Um, I did not plan for it. Um, this type of format wasn't out there. Um, so uh, I just wanted to give uh, younger men uh, some encouragement that, you know, it, even if you think you're in love and you want to do the thing early, still it's, it's smartest to, to, to wait. Appreciate it, fam. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go back to the, this guy who's the phlebotomist. Um, sincere, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, since, okay. Hello. All right. You were saying, do I, do I want to hear about your original plan? Right. Okay. No. And I will tell you why. You're not doing it. You're doing what you have to do to survive and live. Okay. Okay. So your original plan, it doesn't matter. It can, it does if it can change, oh, change my situation. Okay. Go ahead, since you know okay, better so, than I do. No, I, I no, nobody ever said that. Okay, but anyway, uh, I mean, I don't. I mean, go ahead, dude. The reason why this, um, I became a phlebotomy technician is because there's something called a paramedical insurance exam. I'm not sure if you heard about, about, about that. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. I don't. I don't have to know. Right, you know go ahead. All right, thank you. All right, look here, man. Don't be a bitch. Uh, do, do bitchy boys, bitch get the fuck off my phone, spit. bitch! I don't fuck get the phone. Up. Get, go take blood, boy. Came you and work a job where people quiet in the background. You sensitive ass! I didn't choose your path. Oh no, no, see. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get us another roomy room. Oh, I don't need to do all that. I'm going to be a phlebotomist, you see. Then I'm going to get in and work the insurance path. And then I'm going to have my dream to where it can make me a six-figure dude while I'm drawing blood and dispensing jello. And that's how we do it around here. Man, if you don't shut up. Um, hello? Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Your first name is? Brianna. What do you got for me, Brianna? Um, I just wanted to know um, if there was anything I could be doing to help increase my husband's value. Your husband's value. Good question. Uh, what does he do for a living? Uh, he's a manager. 
at Sharon Williams. Sure, the paint place. Mm-hmm. Um, is he managing a store? Yes. What's the position up from him? Up, up from his position. What's the position above his? I believe his district manager mm-hmm. or regional. Has he expressed the desire to want to be a district manager? Yes. Okay. What is he doing to? What is he doing to get it? Um, I mean, he works hard, um, okay. works every day. Um, right. I just wanted to know because we're both, um, young, <laughs> we're both right. 24 and it sounds like he kind of got, I don't want to say married too soon, but I wanted to know what could I be doing as a wife? All right. Okay. Married too soon for what? To, to have the responsibility of a wife and kids? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Do you marry too soon to have the responsibility of a wife and children? Yes. Yeah, he did. Um, do you guys have any children? Yes. How many? Um, a 11-month-old son. And how much is your husband making annually? Um, I think it's about 20, I'm sorry, about 52 or 4. Okay, and are you still working? I am not. All right. Well, here's the thing. At 24 years old, uh, did he go to college? Yes. We met at college. All right. But to, to become the, what is his degree in? Economics. To, to be a manager at Sherman Williams is a dead-end job. You don't need to go to college to manage a paint store. And he can work his ass off. But they don't just promote you because you work your butt off. That's why I asked, what is he doing? What does he want? And it sounds like he's maybe a hard worker and maybe responsible, but the world does not reward that alone. He has to become more valuable. And you can't help him do something that he's not doing. That's why I asked you, has he expressed the desire to become something more? Yeah. Um, Is it, I mean, but has, okay, number two, has okay. he expressed the desire on his own? Yes. What did he say? A roundabout. Um, more um, in regards to finance. Yes. Right? Yeah, we... I guess our concern is more so making a financial, creating financial stability for our son. Okay, I get Uh, it. But I asked you, what has he said about mm -hmm. becoming more financially, earning more money on his own? Meaning, Um, do you bring up the idea, honey, and say, I would love a different standard of living? Or is he saying, you know what? I'm working here, and in two years, I need to be at the district level, so I'm doing... It doesn't sound like he's... I mean, I'm not hearing that he's a driven man. It's not an insult, but it has to come from him. There is no free money. Just because you and he are married and have a child... The world doesn't owe you guys anything. You're making, he's making 50 something. You're not working. Everybody got kids. They don't get free money. And if you guys want to have more children, he's going to have to increase his value. And you don't do that with an economics degree being a paint manager. He needs to get out of a dead end career. If that's what you really want, he needs to get out of a dead end career. One of the best things, one of the best careers is sales, especially with a nowhere degree like economics. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but that's where it is. I know he, I know he likes sales. Okay, but <laughs> liking is, but like, I don't give a crap about like. It has, okay. Do you, <laughs> you guys want to have any more children? Yes. How many more? Um, at least two. So you will be going to work? Yes. Yeah, you'll be going to work because he can't afford for you to stay at home. And you guys, and my best, here's what I would suggest. You guys are young. Decrease your standard of living, turn off Instagram, st- and, and get real about how much people make in this country and a, and a middle-class lifestyle and be happy with what you have 
always striving for more, but not trying to live this lifestyle that comes on a picture or something because, ma'am, you picked a man who has an economics degree. You did not pick a doctor or a lawyer or a stockbroker or whatever. So you didn't pick a high-earning man. And you don't have to be a high-earning man to be a good man, a, a good father, and a solid citizen. Yeah. So... I, I had want, her, I mean, sorry. Uh, you want a standard of living, I get it, but children, 72% of mothers in this country have to work. And if you want more than one child, which I suggest not just having one child, I'm an only child, ma'am, you're going to be working unless your husband can figure out a way to, to earn three, four times the, three, four times the money he's making. He should be on the call, but appreciate you calling in. Um, it's a good, it's a good wife thing to do, you know. But I, that's about as far as I'm comfortable with actually trying to advise a, a, someone's wife. But I think you're a good wife to at least ask the question. Um, but he has to be the one that's driven. Got it? Yes. All right, bye bye. Yeah, thanks. All right, guys. I'm gonna get up off of here. It's almost one o'clock. I've answered enough calls from guys. Um, and I got more and more guys coming in, too, right now. It's just like it never stops. So let me go ahead and wrap this one up just a second. I see the rest of you guys. Around. I'll try to get through you, and that's it. To the guy who was the phlebotomist, let me tell you why I hung up on you. One, you don't know as much as you, 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 you are going into a feminine energy argumentative place. Sitting here talking to someone who, whether you like it or not, I've proven that I know at least a little bit about what I'm talking. Your life is proven that you don't. And getting mad at, getting frustrated, getting whatever, you want more respect than you've earned. Don't talk over me, don't do this, don't do that. Man, you can't even keep the people in your background quiet. And see, that's why a lot of that's also why a lot some of you guys are frustrated with the position you're at in life because you've chosen it and you may feel as though I should be here and I'm here. That ain't my fault. It's not the world's fault. It's in your control. All right, uh the dude that said, um, let me go to let me go to here. Uh Matt, Matt, what's going on? Unmute yourself. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? I can. I can't hear you now. What you got for him? What's your question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your question? Hey. So, um, so I'm a professional woodworker. I'm wanting to get more into the custom world of furniture. And okay. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time knowing how to market myself. And okay, you're you know a professional that woodworker. Profession is that you're an image consultant. So you're a professional woodworker. Yes. Okay, that's a skilled position. Um, what mm-hmm. city are you in? Um, I'm in a place called Saratoga Springs, but let's just say I'm near Salt Lake City. Okay, so the first thing it's always wise to do is say, I do this. <laughs> what are the top dogs in my line of work who are they and what are they doing? Because uh, I always think, mm-hmm. don't go recreate the wheel. So let's say you have Tom's Woodworking, Rob's Carpentry, and George's uh, Woodworking and Carpentry. And they're number one, two, and three. I look and see what they're doing and what kind of advertising and marketing they're doing and copy that. Uh, outside of that, let's say there's no template. You're you're selling to the public or are you selling to businesses? Matt. Um, I want to do both. Okay, you got to pick. I know you want to do both, but you got to choose. See, a person that sells to everybody is sells to nobody. You have to define your ideal customer. Ideally, it's easier to sell to customers. Ideally, um, it's easier to sell to people than businesses. But what do you want to sell to? Yeah. 
people. All right. All right. Def- definitely, I would like to sell to the oh. high end clients that are well, doing. You, 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 you got to work your way up. You got to work your way up. Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt, you got to work your way up. No one knows you. You may have the best work in the world. No one knows you. Um, one of the things that I would suggest is one, hiring a, mar- a, a local marketing firm to help you get your name out around your ideal customer. People okay. can't purchase from you until they know who you are. You are the woodworker. You're not the advertising and marketing agency. And the the problem with that comes is you got to pay for that before you make any money. While you're doing that, how many do you have existing customers or clients you've done work for? Um, a handful. Huh? Most, a handful? Mostly side work. Okay, well... Only a couple. Only a couple. Okay, well, then here's a problem, too. You don't... Then you're going to have to go do some work for free. Go do some work for free and ask the people that you do the work for free to publicize you. I did. When I was in Oklahoma and I was starting out as an image consultant, no one knew me. And I had to pay for advertising and marketing just like everybody else. But I also offered my services to the local magazine editors that ran the three largest magazines in Oklahoma. And I got effectively $10,000 worth of advertising for doing an image consult for the chief editor. You're going to have to work it. And, And that's the thing. It sounds like you're still trying to build a business. Marketing is not... I mean, marketing comes as a as a result of a solid business plan with a marketing plan in it. You need someone to write you a business plan, and then your business plan needs to be a marketing plan. You don't need to write it. You need to pay someone to do that, and then you're going to have to go into debt in order to invest and build and grow a business. And like I said earlier tonight, there is no free money. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, we're back to lifestyle. Come on, dude. Um, uh, all right, look. I just had you're 34 to years. 34 years old, and uh-huh. you have a spot on the cannabis business, right? Right. I'm really. I'm high up. I'm okay. in DC. I'm, I'm doing okay. Really hold well. on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Okay. How many years experience do you have in this? Years. How many years experience do you have in the business? In the business of cannabis, or in business in general? The business of cannabis, I've been in. I mean, at least 12 years. Okay. Are you known in the area? Yeah, I'm popular. I have a network. All right. So then if you have an opportunity to get a better location, is it going to increase your income? Yeah, I make pretty good income now, but it's, is it's it going to like, is the new location going to increase your bottom line? Yes. How do you know? Just the location is prime real estate. I know the city. It's going to it's going to make everything better. And people might not. Well, well, if that's the case, then if that's the case, you should have did it yesterday. Yeah, I just been trying to make sure that I can uh step No, no, up. no, 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 no. There's no there's no need to go back and forth. I asked okay. you how long you been in the business. You right. said 12 years. I yes, said, sir. "Do you know what you're doing?" Yes. Yeah, like, Are you known in your city? Yeah. All right. Then is the business you're talking about going to improve your bottom line? You said, "Yes." There's no more questions to answer. You do it. All right. I mean, right. why do why do we need all the back and forth and him and hawing and uh just fucking do it. But the question is, I don't, the question is, but the point is, if you, if you really dead sure on the things you told me that it's a no brainer, but it doesn't sound like you're that sure. That's why it's not a no brainer. I just want to make sure because of the times that we in. I I don't give a shit about the times we're in, man. The times we're in, there's millionaires and billionaires and watches being made right now. I want to hear anything about times that we're in. Steve, I mean, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon started this year. With, with his money and he doubled his income this year. I don't hear shit about that. People still gonna smoke, aren't they? That's right. Fuck you mean. <laughs> yeah, I want no risk, man. You need to unmute yourself. You want no risk. Hello? First name. What's your question, man? How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. And yourself? Good. What, what's the question you got for me? Uh, 
I just wanted to uh, call in and tell you I really appreciate what you're doing. I really like the channel and I appreciate it. Oh, well. I'm uh, currently in Chicago. Uh, I, I fall into the Henry category. I'm an attorney. Okay. Uh, and I just, yeah, just wanted to say thanks. Appreciate it, man, friend. Thank you. Yeah, Good done. way to end. Good way to end. Look, guys. Part of the reason I did my uh, show with uh, Ramil Amir, uh, the Lions Den, was to talk about business. And I keep saying there's no free money. There's no free money. You may be really good at what you do, but until you put it out in public and give people a chance to buy from you, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be a risk. Relationships are risk. Business is a risk. Hell, life is a risk. And if you want to take the safe path, the safe path never turns out to be other thing, anything other than safe and average. And that's what you're starting to see. What are we starting to hear? I, I want to increase my value. I want to increase my value. All right, here's the thing. But if your value is already low, let's say value is on a scale from 0 to 100. And let's say average or normal value is 50. Well, if you can increase your value from 50 to 70, you've increased your value by roughly what? Roughly 40%? That's a big increase. All right. Well, let's say your value is 10. And you increase it to 30. Well, that's a three times increase in value. But you're still at 30 versus the guy at 70. Where are you starting from versus where do you want to get to? And, 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 and due respect, a lot of you guys want free money. Like the guy in Holly, on, on Honolulu, you went to the military, the safe bet. I'm going to go in on Uncle Sam, and I'm not going to get out here in, in, the, in the marketplace and have to compete with you guys. I'm not going to go into debt and go into college and get out here in the marketplace and, and compete for the higher return, I'm going to take the safe path. Three hots in a cot, you know, we all know what it is. And then at 10 years, I come out and I can transition into a stable, comfortable s civilian job. But now I want to take that and I want to, I want to parlay it into free market money. No. It should not be that way, and I'm glad it ain't that way. You should not be able to go get safe money and parlay it into free money. No free lunch. Um, so here's what it's going to happen right here. Here's what's going to happen. Um, let me talk to the ladies going forward. Guys, I've given you guys two shows. Um, I'll be making videos for you guys. Um, but if you want advice, let me tell you what you're going to have to do. You have to pay for it because a lot of you guys are looking for million dollar advice for free and business advice and this and that. This is not about, this channel is not about me helping you increase your business. It's about helping you increase your profile. I can talk about business, but look, and what I'm starting to see is a lot of you guys between 18 and 34 that have called in, you've allowed yourself to get lazy. You're not hungry. You're not driven. You, here's another thing, man. Real talk, um, generation, millennials and Generation Z, y'all aren't hungry for nothing. Y'all ain't miss no meals. You're not like the previous generation of people who actually went to bed hungry. Y'all, the, the music you grew up on and the stories you hear people tell, y'all ain't lived it. And it's not your fault, but you, you're comfortable. I mean, like when I said I talked to a dude that's 22, and then a dude that's 31, and they're both sounding like the same person. I'm like, well, there should be 10 years gap between this dude and this dude. No, it's the same. Or the dude that's 25, sitting on the mama couch working part-time. You should show enough. No, better than that. And honestly, I start to see why this high value thing is starting to ruffle some feathers. Because if you just had to look at the samplings of the last two nights' calls, the majority of guys aren't even at the 
I'm just saying, the majority of guys aren't even at the the normal part, the middle part. That I, I'm right here in the middle. They're not even on that. They're not even on the top of the bell curve. You know, if this is the low end, this is the mid, and over here is the high end. The mean is right here. Well, a lot of you guys are over here, and you wanting to be over here. Wait a minute. You cannot go from over here all the way over to here. What kind of magic beans are you talking about? Like Andre Hatchett said, you guys are wanting to skip the boring, hard work part. You want to get to the YouTube, Instagram, suit, fragrance, you know, drinking good, eating good, smelling good, looking good, riding good. No, you need to get to that part where you eating crap. Go back to the beginning of the video. Watch the, watch the uh, things I said at the beginning of the video uh, and go forward. I will say this to you as a man. If you're not willing to invest $10,000 in one calendar year, just shut it down. Because that's the, really the starting point. You're going to have to be willing to invest money. And that's what your, comp your competition is doing. They're investing money into sales coaching. They're investing money into becoming better competitors. And with this whole coronavirus and the economy, man, uh, this regular, regular, regular thing is a very big risk. You know, I would suggest that you guys really put some deep thought into uh, getting yourself stable. That's why I say I don't get why you're not working two jobs, minimum. Why you have a shot at it. So uh, why are they getting banned? Who got banned? Who? Who's banning people? He only asked about thing. Okay, who's banning folks? I got put in timeout. I don't know. Oh, stream elements seems to be banning folks. I don't see anybody banning anything. Nobody got banned. You got timed out. Let me see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Stream elements. Do do do. Mm hmm. Hmm. Let me see something. Let me do something real quick. Ba -ba 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 Let me see. Well, no one's been banned. You may have been timed out. Stream elements may be having an issue right now. Let me see. Yeah, no one's gotten banned. No one's gotten banned. To do, do, so... Uh, I will go back and adjust the settings. Uh, but the overall point is this. You got to do the work, guys. You got to do the work. Hashtag show your work. And, and personally, I like it that way. I, I'm glad that you can't get it just because you want it. What what would be the point of having to do the work then? If you could just decide to go get it because you're just like, well, I, I, I want it now. No. Mm -mm. There's a reason why Bankhead and Buckhead exist. There needs to be something to aspire to. Let me go to the spam filters. Okay. Paragraph protect. Okay. All right. That should do it. That should do it. Nobody got banned. Lengthy paragraphs and things. So there's a reason there's Bankhead and Buckhead. No one got banned. Hey, first off, check this shit out. Uh, I do, but the thing is, um, the comments and the comment section, oh, it's moderated. You can't just come in here talking crazy. Yeah, nobody, the moderators don't ban anybody. You've been getting timed out by the bot. Um, symbol protection, emote protection, uh, ban phrases. So there we go. 
So if you put in, if you if you write a real long paragraph, it was banning you. Or if you put in a bunch of symbols, like it, I mean, the thing is, you can't be putting in like fifty symbols. It's gonna ban that too. And that's the thing YouTube is even starting to do. I think you guys need to understand something. YouTube is watching these live streams heavily because you got people on live streams lying about folks, slandering people, defaming people. Uh, you got, there's a lot of stuff going on with content creators. And I don't think a lot of folks over here take it as seriously as it is. Um, YouTube is tired of a bunch of the foolishness. And they are even, YouTube is moderating comments in the chat room and in the comment section. And I believe this, I'm not going to allow nobody to mess my stuff up. So, yeah, they were deleting left and right. Yeah, so, yeah, but it's not the moderators. My moderators are good. How do you become a moderator on your channel? Well, first, I got to know you. Uh, two, you got to be around long enough. Three, you need to be a patron. Why do you want to moderate on my channel? Oh, I slander folks all the time. Oh, really? I don't even talk about folks, but let me do this. Boo! I'm going to slander you right now by getting rid of you. Bye. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So here we go. Oh, why? Your mama? <laughs> Dummy. The emoji uh, thing was in the crazy lane, though. Can I edit my content? Uh, I don't know you. And I'm also going to, I'm also going back through moderators because I have some moderate. Um, one of the things that happens in YouTube, you have to, when you run a channel, it's wise to stay up on top of your, your links and people who's moderating things. So are you ever coming to Seattle? Uh, yes. Coming to Seattle probably in the next five weeks. So, anywho, all right, um, this show is going to be up. I'm going to start slicing and dicing these shows into smaller bits to put them up on um, on Instagram uh, and on on Facebook because the, the, this thing ran three hours, and they really are about an hour over. Um, so, these shows surely should go about two hours. So, peace out. YouTube is the thought police nowadays. No, no understand something. YouTube has a business, Jared. And I 100% support the fact that they need to protect their business. Do you realize how many people come into YouTube to think they can just make an avatar and a fake name and just talk, say some of the most god-awful stuff? There's billions of dollars on the line. And you got people trying to sell products and companies marketing their products against people who have nothing in this game except they just want to spread BS? No, thank you. I hope they start moderating it more. I hope they start moderating it more. I hope they start shutting down a bunch of the foolishness because some of this stuff's getting out of hand, man. So, all right. Can somebody put the link in there? No, the show is over. The show is over. All right, people. I'm getting up out of here. It's, it's, been, it's been over an hour. We're over an hour late, but it was a good show. Until next time, peace. We are gone. Yeah, YouTube is a business. I think people forget that. Santa too. Small, I need to give you a wrench back too. Shout out to Raven. Shout out to Carl. It's not hard to fool. What about late bloomers? Oh, and likes of late bloomers. Uh, that's, that show is going to be... No. Late bloomers is going to be later on. Late bloomers is going to... No, uh, Alexa, stop music. That's what 
the guy. I think Alexa is really a girlfriend. Jesus Christ. Alexa is like, I don't know, have you seen some of those kids where Alexa is alive? Stop it, Alexa. Go to sleep. Take it easy. We're getting up out of here. 